All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in in December 4th, 2020, and the stock market volatility is back, and I'm going to buy two crazy plays tomorrow. So today was a very, very crazy day. I don't know if you could see the after hours there, but what we saw in that final 20, 30 minutes of market was absolutely insane. This was about three points in a few minutes, and this was off of the news that Pfizer is going to have some supply chain issues with the vaccine. That news literally came out right after California announced it's about to do some more lockdowns. We got more updates on that. So this was the first time in a long, long time that we actually saw the market move and it got people a little bit uneasy there. So this is very important, especially as we're about to wrap up the first week of December and the last month of the year. It's going to be very, very interesting. So I hope you're ready and we got some plays, but I got the breakdown of what happened, what we're looking for what would even justify me to make any more bigger plays if we start to see any more volatility like this and then what we played today the keys everything else and what we're looking at tomorrow it's going to be a froggy friday so let us not delay you guys know what you need to do drop your thumbs up on the video make sure you subscribed and if you don't know we are live monday through friday 30 minutes for open it's that first link in the description and it is pinned in the comments we better see you there in the morning it's free 99 it costs you nothing to join youtube.com slash the stock market you can post the play see the plays watch the watch list come to life and yes if the volatility comes back and the market goes crazy and you need the fastest news in the world, we are the place to be. And the most important thing you need to do, post your watch below. Let us know what you're looking at. Got any plays, comments, remixes, anything. Post them below and source that info. Shout out to chat, baby. So right off the bat, the volatility is back. Kind of. We saw a big move today, and again, that was a very, very big drop. It was because of the Pfizer stuff. However, we haven't seen a move like that in months. So we watch the market every day. We're sitting there every single day. This move was pretty erratic, and you could even see it. Not only was this a three-point drop down, it was a point back up and then another point back down and then it shot back up. So how we open tomorrow is going to be very, very important, but this is highlighting some of that volatility. Now, this is what I will tell you guys, and this is why I'm saying the volatility is kind of back. It could have been an overreaction. The news was even rebutted a little bit right after. People started saying that we were kind of already aware of this stuff, but... The real question was, was this an overreaction or not? And really what I'm thinking is coming in in December, it's clear that if the market gets pieces of news it won't like, it will react. That's what today's showing us. But now my main signal is going to be kind of an emergency response by the government or kind of like we've seen with Powell during March and all of that. That would really, really confirm it if we see kind of a surprising new set of actions. So today really wasn't like, oh my gosh, it's that crazy. But it was kind of a pay attention and be on watch because we definitely got some key things out. So the issue was Pfizer said that they had some issues with the supply chain. Again, I don't even know if this was talked about or not. It's kind of clear how the market reacted that it was a little bit unexpected. And like we said earlier, right before there was the news of the California lockdowns. But after seeing what we saw today, there was a good jobs report. There was a good ISM. This is kind of just hinting that the vaccine is really, really the key as opposed to the lockdowns, because we've been seeing week after week, this last four weeks, market had vaccine news. You've been hearing all these different companies. It's been bringing the market up. So it kind of makes sense why Wall Street kind of had this knee jerk reaction to today's news, because if there's going to be a problem with the vaccine, it makes sense why we saw that move. So those are going to be the two things to watch. Again, we got that final jobs report. We're going to get more reports tomorrow for the non farms. But all of these data points are highlighting what happened with the economy when lockdowns first started. So if we see lockdowns, it's Again, it's kind of clear that that's not really what the market's really worried about. Nonetheless, now today you saw a record amount of deaths in America, in Italy, and a bunch of other places. You saw fresh lockdowns, and that was a little bit scary there because now that was what the market was a little bit more worried about this morning. You did see the market pop off the ISM. Today was just a very overall slow, boring day. It kind of just had some of that looming virus concerns in the morning. You can see we kind of hung around the previous close lines. That ISM report came out, more stimulus news, and then kind of the stimulus news got rebutted and then it kind of bounced back up again then more negative stimulus news then more positive stimulus news i believe this was like record cases in new jersey and then finally this is where the pfizer stuff came out so you had a lot going on today and it's clear that if there isn't a solution to the virus which has pretty much been sold to wall street as the vaccine that is what we're going to react so again this is just giving us some key data points and now finally we are going to get stimulus we've been hearing about it a lot more today i don't mean that we're going to get it for sure but 
But what I'm really looking for, this is just my theory, is in essence to watch out for stimulus to pass, but get a negative reaction from the market because it just may not be big enough. It seems like they're talking about stimulus, but it seems like they're talking about something that a lot of Americans really just, it's, it's going to be different than what we saw in the past. So kind of seeing how we had a knee-jerk reaction, we want to see if other news could kind of keep driving this response. So today was a crazy day towards the end. The real question is, what are we going to get tomorrow? But now this kind of introduced a weird level of uncertainty, but let's see how resilient the market is. And if it bounces off, that might give it some fuel for the melt up. Otherwise, we now know our catalyst to look for if we are going to get a little bit of a bumpy path coming into 2021. So I hope you're ready, but that is pretty much it. So let us get into the plays. So right off the bat, I have two crazy plays I want to make. I'm going to go over all of these at close or as this event started to happen. I made one play on Pfizer. We made another play on Myrna, and this is kind of the interaction. And now the third play, I own the shares of these. Remember, we made them free. We've been holding them for a while, but I want to watch INO and I might make a bigger play on this one. We'll see. But this is the first crazy play I'm going to look for, but I want you guys to kind of understand why. And today overall was just a really, really weird day in general because you saw these vaccine stocks move again. This was Pfizer as it dropped. We made our first play on there. We'll go over that. But then as Pfizer was dropping, the market was dropping. Myrna started to go up even after hours. I and O, other vaccine candidates that were kind of close in the running, they benefited off of that negative news. So that was kind of a cool sympathy play. We hit those. Those plays even went up 300% on Myrna. So I want to see how this plays out. But what really made today weird, you could even see it in like UAL. Airlines still closed up almost 8%. Walgreens closed up another 7 8%. And this was based off of the vaccine. So you kind of had that rotation day. A lot of the moves were kind of muted when this news came out. So it was very, very hard to see truly what was happening. So what I want to aim for is kind of these direct virus sympathy plays. And that is what I'm going to be looking at tomorrow. So as far as the plays, so you could even kind of see the timeline. The first play that we got was the Pfizer. And this was a little bit big. This was a little bit risky. I got a December 4th. This expires tomorrow. Again, true YOLO, true gamble play. Very, very crazy. I got 50 of the 38 puts for Pfizer paid five cents, 50 at five cents, about $250. We got that at 1244. So you could kind of see the timing of where we were at. So we were like right there at the bottom and I was just assuming it was going to come down and it was pretty cheap. And I believe those contracts still ended up holding up. Yeah, they still closed up like 50%. There was a lot of the volatility, but then after I grabbed that play, we started to notice the other sympathies going up. And the best part was we just caught it quick. So Myrna started popping up and then that's where I got the second play, but I spent a lot on the Pfizer. They were the ones directly affected. Then I grabbed two of these Myrnas. Again, they expire tomorrow. So very, very risky. And if you remember, we have that other call from the ghetto spread earlier this week. But as Pfizer was like deep into that one candle here at 36, I grabbed these and I grabbed the 195 calls at 20 cents. I grabbed two of them. They closed up at 60. So if you responded early again, shout out to Colt, fastest news in the world, baby. But a lot of the premium is still holding even just after this sort of volatility. It kind of got the market on edge. So we will have to see. But those are the first two plays. What I will be looking for is INO tomorrow. We saw them make a pretty epic move there too. So holding the shares, want to see how that's going to play out. That's the first play. As far as the second play that I'm going to be looking at is McDonald's. So if the market drops, I explained this yesterday. I was going to look at it. It was a little bit more expensive, but I said, hey, I'll just stick with the vaccine plays for now. But McDonald's puts on the downside. So you kind of saw it pick up. Those plays have been cheap. I really like it. If we start to see the market move and then you see volatility pick up, you guys remember how we've hit these in the past. So making it very, very clear cut. If we do see volatility and we don't really have a play to grab or we're looking to kind of ride the wave, I'm going to look for those cheap McDonald's puts if and only if we do see volatility. So that's the second play. And then finally, I think I'm going to grab these tomorrow. I might wait a little bit, but Ulta Leap. So they had their earnings and this is where it gets even more crazier because there's volatility. I'm looking to play the vaccine stocks, but like I'm saying, None of this has really been confirmed yet, but I've been talking about Ulta. And now we got the earnings out the way, the stock drop. I'm hoping this kills the premium, but I'm still eyeing that Santa Claus rally. I'm not getting too panicked just yet. So if Ulta drops tomorrow and I could get a good price, I'm going to be looking to get some of those leap contracts that we've talked about. So those are the first three plays. Watch out again, McDonald's for any volatility. Watch this whole virus trio, the vaccine stocks and how they're going to play out. And then I'm still going to kind of aim for that Santa Claus rally. But as far as everything else, we made a few 
few other plays here. Really just managing what we had. We made a DocuSign trade in the morning. I had a little bit of a mix-up. I ended up getting them on 80 cents, but I bought them on the other TD Ameritrade account, our long-term. I can't believe I did this. It was on accident. So we got them at 80. I sold them out at 87, but then I had to rebuy them back at 90 because I just didn't want them on that account. So there was some slippage between that, but we bought those in the morning at 642. And we talked about this because this was a, a really good play and I liked it, but you could have seen how we could have executed it better because we bought it like right here in the morning. We got it like literally right off the bottom, but the contracts only went up about 50, 60%. But then if you went to the weeklies and if you wanted to take that gamble again, this is just to understand how different contracts value different. I'd like the time, but you're noticing how closer to the money's benefited. If we spent that same $80, those contracts would have closed at like $2.250. But what we ended up doing this play, the thing that has been saving us a lot and giving us good opportunities, I ghetto spreaded them. So remember, we got the first play at 80, even though it's showing 90 up here. But stock went up. As you can see, we grabbed it very, very early in the day. We took advantage of time. The stock kept ripping up had earnings premium, but the option was moving slow. They were really, really high priced. But right before power hour, I saw they had a high premium. So what I decided to do, I shorted the 370s. We bought the 350s, $20 difference. By shorting the 370s for 85 cents, got pretty much most of all of our money back. But there's a $20 difference per contract, $2,000 times five. It's a $10,000 max gain. Got all my money back. We explained this, what would happen if the stock went down or just didn't go up enough, both of these plays would expire. I don't lose anything because we have collected our initial investment back by shorting this. However, if it did rip up and it gets to our strike price, we would be able to still profit off of it. So it was a win-win scenario no matter what. But that was the first play we made today. And then finally, we did something with the Boeings. I was going to operate this a little bit weird, but it, at the end of the day, it seemed like the ghetto spread would have been the best option. So if you remember that Boeing from the beginning of this week, talked about it on the watch list. I said, if they get around these levels, it's going to go crazy crazy. And sure enough, it did. The options started to shoot up and you could see the difference and why the ghetto spread is very, very important. These contracts were up 200% at one point. Remember, we bought those at the beginning of the week. They had a little bit of juice in them. So as they were going up, I decided to short the 340s, which is a $40 difference per contract. Again, we have five of them. So $4,000 a contract times five, $20,000 max gain, but we bought these contracts for 150. We shorted the 340s at 207. So we got more than what we paid back for these calls. And it also kind of paid for most of the puts as well too. But the best part was while these options were going up 200%, the puts only dropped 50% and they stayed there the whole time. And now you could even see, we still have $1,000 of profit on the original contract. And then by doing the ghetto spread, we were up a little bit more on these contracts. But as this value dropped, we started to gain money on the ones that we shorted. So it's kind of securing our loss right there. All in all, I think I spent like 1300 or 1400 on this trade. We got back a thousand. My whole risk now is about $300 on this trade instead of that initial thousand. If I do want to close out the puts, I could get all of my money back and turn this to like a $40 risk trade and have the upside of $20,000. But again, we did the ghetto spread and has benefited us a tremendously. So those were the only two plays still riding out. We still have some of those Abbey Vies in waiting. But like we said, in this marketplace, there's been a mix of melt ups and volatility and moves, the ghetto spread has really, really been our friend. So those were the final plays that we made. As far as everything else, I am going to be looking for the airlines. I want to see how these play out again. Like I said, with Walgreens, we want to see how you get any of this effect from the vaccine. Watch DocuSign for the continuation with earnings. Again, another one I'd watch. I saw them in the morning. I was going to take them, but they move crazy. I just like how it's moving. And I think tomorrow with everything in the market, this is kind of going to be a runner up, but Snowflake, I really, really like the options. They had some cheap ones and this thing could really, really surprise and move. We're still holding our like one or two free shares. So not too bad, but keep your eye on them. Watch some of those other vaccine targets. Again, Vaxar is one of them I want to see, but it's clear that INO is really going to be the big winner. So keep eye on them. McDonald's, like we said on the downside, Starbucks went up and I thought I was going to be able to catch it off of the dip this morning, but it kept going. But go look at the contract prices. They are moving really, really, really slow. So I want to catch this on a down day or even maybe coming towards earnings. But I think at the money or in the money contracts with a lot of time, maybe the winner on this. So we'll see. But watch them. Watch Snapchat. It is nearing $50. It just started shooting up a lot of negative news around Twitter and Facebook today. And Snapchat usually doesn't get mentioned in the baby, baby mama drama. And I think that's what helped them come up here. But it's reaching a very, very critical point. I think at 50, it could also make it go crazy. And then that reminds me of Boeing as well. Boeing, you might get more certification, but this thing closed up another six and a half. You could see it with the options. I really, really like this play. So the question is, does it break out with momentum or does it kind of start to base out 
and slow down here. That is really, really what I want to see. But watch them again on a Friday. It could be really, really exciting. And then Spotify, I like this as a Friday play. It showed some of that steam there from the morning, but then it quickly died out. So the question is going to be on this one, kind of like Boeing, does it kind of hold up and set a range? Or do you kind of see that more explosiveness? Now, finally, a lot of people talked about TLT and everything when this event started going on. TLT was already up. It was doing the reverse of what we've been seeing, what I've been looking for for that whole risk on event. So TLT wasn't it. But if you want to watch with the virus or the vaccine and any of this stuff, watch UUP. If something is really, really going to get a little bit shaky, if you watch even the live video, I kept bringing up UUP on this chart. I wanted to see if it's going to spike. So don't forget kind of the importance of that. But if there is really kind of something and people are tripping out, you will see UUP spike even kind of like the VIX because the VIX was a little bit muted today. So it is going to get interesting. I hope you're ready. I hope you got your helmet on. But that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure you post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to stay pure, baby. That means keep it simple, baby. But the cold loves you. I love you. We'll see you in the morning. Let's go. <laughs>